All right, hey friends. How are we doing today? This is Andy again, coming to you from here at Andy's World of Bass. Just want to start by saying thank you. Thanks for watching the videos, and I uh, appreciate you. And uh, do the best I can to be make myself available to answer questions and uh, be a resource for you. You know, any of the gear, any of the instruments, pickups, strings, amps, cabs. Uh, accessories, all the things that I use, I'm always uh, happy and willing to, to answer questions. If you want to uh, reach out to me, please do, and, and I will do my best to uh, to get back to you. And uh, I sure as heck don't mind uh, having a conversation. You know, uh, I do it all the time with uh, helping people decide what's be what might be best for them. So uh, there's a lot of choices out there, and. Uh, not a lot of the gear is readily available at the dealers, so it's hard to go try it. And when you're making a big investment in a musical instrument or a piece of musical gear, it can be a daunting task to, to make that decision. So, I'll, you know, I'm, I've always been around and always tried to make myself available to, um, to, be, uh, to be a resource and be helpful. So uh, that will continue. What I want to talk to you about today is this... Uh, Maybe it will do a little lesson um, that, that you might find useful. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the primary realm of what I do, it's American rock and roll, rhythm and blues, soul music, blues, and things like that. Um, Americana, sometimes bluegrass, sometimes country. But it all kind of falls under that American roots music umbrella. And uh, my style lends itself pretty well to that, and I'm confident. Uh, I'm a confident player in, in, most, of, in most of those genres. So uh, that, that's what I gravitate towards, and that's what um, the people that hire me, that I work with, I play in five or six different bands, keeps my schedule full. Um, they've come to appreciate how I uh, contribute. And uh, one of the things that uh, I commonly will do, let's say I'm in the key of D, there's this kind of uh, chromatic... you're working from the from the one if this is the if this is the scale D major you're working from the one to the three to the four chromatically um, up to the five six dominant seven major seven octave creates a nice motion, nice, nice, nice rhythmic motion, and also some some kind of um, leading tone and passing tone, um, melodic content, and uh, it's very soulful. Okay, so that that basic concept can be done a lot of different ways, and I, with a variety of different subdivisions and uh, applied in different places. <laughs> I've done is I've developed ways to make it sound bigger and badder using some ghost notes and using multiple strings, uh, using octaves, for example. So uh, traditionally, I and uh, in the, in the 16th note feel with ghost notes. So what I um, like always did was uh, something like this. Sixteenth notes, straight funky sixteenth notes. That's the same thing with adding a whole bunch of uh, muted notes, ghost notes. Starts to make it a, a, a funky in a, in a in a different kind of a way, right? By adding some ghost notes in there, it starts to. The way that I think of it is, it is when you're playing ghost notes, you're kind of starting to get kind of in, in, involved with the conga player, you know. 
and uh, you're hearing, I'm, I'm hearing conga drums going on in my head. If they're in the band, I'm playing with the conga drum player. If they're not there, I'm hearing them. You know, so almost always in, in, in funk and, you know, the great records and everything, they'll have somebody playing bongos or somebody playing congas. It's in there. It might be, it might be low in the mix, but it's in there. It's, it's creating those cool, those cool accents and those cool um, little rhythmic things. So what I found was <clears throat> a way to make it sound bigger and fatter using multiple strings and octaves. Then throwing the whole kitchen sink at it and putting some ghost notes in them. And if you listen to... straight All right now doing it with that whole using the concept turn back putting some some contour in it so it's not just all da -da 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 -da, you know it's not just all um, chromatic scale wise motion it has some it has some uh, some contour to it okay so that one would be well the way that I've been doing it lately you know to make it sound bigger and funkier and fatter is going some slappy in there. And when you are able to work up the double pop, that opens up a whole bunch of new and uh, awesome avenues. You can also, you can do straight thumps. Single pop, double pop. And then you can alternate double thump, single pop, single thump, double pop. Double thump, double pop. Well, when you get it cooking, when you when you after you've practiced it and. I like to play along to YouTube jam tracks, you know, that are like a one chord jam track with, with something that make, keeps me honest, uh, timing wise. And um, I just jam along and, and, try, and to, to, try and toe the line and try and work in those subdivisions and get, get them to the point where I can really um, build the stamina to lay into it. And really 
make everything sound nice and even and in the pocket, you know, and funky and 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 confident. And uh, man, it, when I take it out to the bandstand, it's not something I do all the time, but it's kind of like that that climactic kind of subdivision thing to do on the bass at the end of a guitar solo or in a and at the end of a, a jam section or at the end of the song when when everything's already over with and you're just kind of going through the last uh, few times of the you know going around a few more times and just kind of building to that that highest crescendo it gives you one more place to go that 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 has more fullness and more drive than just going you know that that used to be kind of the the crescendo, the the, the, the the kind of the um, the most subdivided kind of place that I that I would ever go, and the, but now that I've, I've I've added this thing, it adds a, it adds another layer. It adds one more one more place to go. Now that one right there, the the tricky part is the transition from this octave to this octave. So that that is the tricky part. set you up moving from the F sharp up to the A, getting from the D down to the F sharp, it requires a shift down. And what I do is while I'm shifting, I'm dragging my finger up with some with some ghost notes. It's a rake, uh, a muted rake. And that just gets me right in, in the right spot. And then I'm, these ones are easy. Right? But it's just that going from D to F sharp. So that sets me up. Because it, I, I'm a firm believer that you know, slop is for chumps. You know, if you're gonna do it, land it. If you're gonna land your move, if you're gonna if you're gonna pull off the move, you want to land. Of course, you do the best you can. You can't win them all, but but that's something that you practice. You know, that's something that I practice on my own. You know, and uh, I get my shit together on it on my own. Then I bring it to the bandstand and uh, and just just go for it. You know, just play play with be be fierce. subdivision has that much more impact it's it, it's really really great because you build it up with all this subdivision and then break it all the way back down
So there you have it. There's a few suggestions for you. Maybe you can find them useful. But uh, again, you know, like I said at the beginning, thank you so much. I really appreciate the... Uh, I enjoy uh, doing the bass videos and and doing the best I can to support all the all the wonderful brands that uh, that support me and uh, I enjoy being a resource and um, and answering questions and uh, whether it be about playing or whether it be about learning to play or whether it be about equipment or anything really uh, pretty friendly guy and willing to um, do my best to help help people out I always have been and um, I'll just continue to do my best and just uh, thank you so much. So have fun with that stuff and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, friends. Peace.